Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Eiffel Tower podcast. My name is Oliver G. This is usually a show about Paris, but I've been known to delve into the French countryside, and that is exactly what we're doing today. We're heading to Burgundy. My special guest is Lena, my wife, and we are headed for the destination of the Chateau de Misserie. Misery, I love the name of it, uh, via a few stops along the way. Now, this is an on-the-go episode, meaning we brought the microphone with us. Uh, when we checked out other places of interest, we recorded in there. You're going to get background sounds, marketplaces. Uh, you're going to hear from a chateau owner. You're going to hear the voice of uh, the woman at a sort of attraction park that I went to speaking in French. I didn't change it. I didn't translate it. You're going to feel like you're here with us, and that's the whole point, on the go. I'd like to say that uh, we can say this episode is brought to you by the children's book, the campaign that Lena and I are running for Kylie the Crocodile. You can find it if you are quick on theearfultower.com slash Kylie. We're not going to talk about it much at all, uh, but go and check that out and get a copy. You only have about three days left. Uh, but it's also brought to you by the Patreon supporters, people who pay for a membership on this show and get lots of bonuses. Now, if you are a member already, I'd highly encourage you to go and watch the replay in the Chateau Gardens from the Chateau de Misri so that you can see the place we're talking about first. My descriptions in this episode, well, they're not perfect, <laughs> but they're, they're not brilliant either. I think it's much nicer. You'll be able to see it. Uh, the Chatelaine herself, Patricia, took me around in the garden and we looked at all the... You know, all the fruits and all the vegetables, and she explained what it's like uh, to live in a chateau. Uh, but also, you know, you get a bit of a country feel, chasing chickens around and being followed by a cat, all that. But all that's to say, you can still enjoy this episode without it. I hope you enjoy the show. This is the Eiffel Tower Podcast on a road trip to Burgundy. Let's do it. music coming out of a car stereo because we're in a car. We're heading, going for a ride. We're heading out to the countryside, everybody. Uh, a bit weird, Lena, to be in a car instead of on a scooter in the French countryside. I know, it's very comfortable. How are you feeling? Comfortable. Comfortable. So, <laughs> me too, actually. We've just uh, driven out of Paris, and the first thing I want to say is traffic is terrible in a car. People are ludicrous. I would never do it uh, by choice. No. Like, I wouldn't be a I taxi mean, driver. You did. Yeah, for a career. Yeah, But uh, Fair enough. Terrible traffic. Great to be going out to the countryside. We're heading to Burgundy. Lena, do you know much about this region? Uh, no. Not much at all. Any, hi any highlights that you're expecting to see or anything? Yes. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yes. Well, we are so... Well, how about you telling with the plan for the weekend? <laughs> well, the first stop, the easy thing is we'll tell you the first stop, and it's the Chateau de Guedelon. It sounds a bit like get along. Get along. Get along. Get, get along. along. And uh, I figured the easiest way is to just uh, get you to read the top of the Wikipedia page about it. <laughs> All right. So we know what good. we're in for. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, go on. Okay. Guedelon Castle, or Chateau de Guedelon. Guedelon. Is, it... <laughs> is a castle currently under construction? near Trigny, oh, Tre Trigny in France. <laughs> yeah. The castle is the focus of an experimental archaeology project aimed at recreating a 13th century castle and its environment using period technique, dress and material. Amazing. How about it? So I'm imagining that it's going to be people dressed as old school stonemasons. Yeah, I'm imagining a lot of chickens running around. Yeah, chickens. You might get to see your, what was it that you wanted to see on the honeymoon? No, I just wanted a milky cow. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't really feel like it because it's like cold and wet. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a bit more of an autumnal trip, but that's what we're doing. We're going to take you on a ride, ride, ride with us. We're going to be at the first stop, Guedelon, the Chateau de Guedelon, in uh, 115 kilometers. So we'll leave you with the music that's been playing in the background.
can't see much of what we're here to see. Ça va? Bien. On est deux pour, pour, pour faire la visite. Alors, deux adultes, ça vous fait 30 euros, s'il vous plaît, monsieur. 30 euros pour le deux? Oui. Parfait. OK, merci. Je peux payer par carte? Bien sûr. Vous venez d'où, monsieur? Australie. Le petit livret de visite en français, ça va ou vous préférez en anglais Vous avez en anglais aussi oui. On prend en anglais. Vous en voulez un en français quand même Oui aussi, pourquoi pas <rire> Juste euh, la prononciation, c'est Guédelon. 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 Guédelon, ok. Merci Guédelon. beaucoup. Au revoir. Guédelon, hein Ok. Ready for a visit yeah. Ready for a trip into medieval France Oh, that tar is getting stronger. <laughs> Alright, let's explore. We'll tell you guys about it as we go. So, Lena. Yes. First impressions. Just overwhelmingly like, wow and why, but all mostly wow. <laughs> it is kind of why because the job that they're doing is incredibly huge. Yeah. It's inc it's incredible. It's unfathomable. It is. It's so huge. Like every little we're seeing guys like chipping away on what do you call it bricks? Yeah. Things stones. Stones. And building a. a a wall building a house it's crazy I feel um, I feel it's maybe like 80% finished I heard that I think they want to finish it in 2023 Ooh, ambitious but it's um, just to describe so Lena and I are standing up in the castle we've just walked along the ramparts which mm -hmm. I loved mm -hmm. uh, which aren't even finished yet you can only walk around sort of half of the castle mm -hmm. and now we're standing in what I assume was a bedroom yeah it looks like it's got massive open fire it This is one of the few rooms that's got paints on yeah. the inside. And we'll like, share pictures of this on Instagram so you can see, but they've painted flowers like... Flowers and stars yeah. and trees and all sorts. I wonder if this is what it's the painting beautiful. looked like in medieval times, because it's it kind of reminds me of like cave art that you see, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like it's not, it's not paintings not, like in Versailles or something like no. that. No, it's very... Uh, Very simple style. You can probably yeah. even hear the man sawing across the other side of the chateau from us. Uh, but if not, I'll get some of that sound. But there's, you know, children running around. It's uh, very muddy. It's very rainy. It's not yeah. hard to imagine. Besides the masks, of course. I haven't, I haven't seen chicken yet. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a couple of geese, geese yeah, yeah. and a donkey. But even if you think you're remotely interested in uh, a sort of medieval... Uh, worlds, you got to check this place out. Yeah, it's one of a kind. I've never seen anything like no. it. and the, the the you know the the people who are working here are dressed in the old-fashioned way, yeah. standing, you know, just kind of ignoring you. They'll answer questions if you ask, but they just ignore you and they just do make a job. wheel or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. like get on with the day's work. And look, and the other thing is, if you're not a French speaker, there's loads of information in English as well. Yeah. So all the billboard, all the signs, and everything. Anyway, onwards. And upwards. Upwards, okay. Let's check those ramparts again. <laughs> yes! You hear that? Yes. Well, I know you hear. <laughs> I saw them to the folks at home. <laughs> that is the sound of rain falling on the roof of our car where we're sitting. Mm -hmm. We got It got rained out, didn't it? A modern car. Our modern car. We're out of the theme park. Yes, we've left. Yeah. Uh, but it was great. We thought we'd just give you a little update. Uh, on on uh, Guédelon. Guédelon. Great to say, it's one of those places uh, similar to Carcassonne. It kind of rolls off your tongue. Vesely. Mm, There's some yeah. places in uh, Mont Saint Michel that just sound good. Yeah, Saint Malo. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Paris, eh, Paris. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of the name, it's not that great. Anyway, I thought I'd, uh, I'd get your sort of uh, overwhelming thoughts. All right, the overwhelming thoughts, huh? Did you enjoy it? You can be honest. I yes, I did. I mean, it did. I'm not much of a like, um, you know, outdoorsy kind of gal. Gal, yeah. I guess. Yeah. You know, I was a scout as a <laughs> child yeah. and went to scout it's camp. Like a, it's like a therapy and it feels session. like yeah, it feels like you know every scout camp I went to is always rainy and cold, mm. and here it was rainy and cold. So I kind of got those. Scout memories Scout back issues. and muddy, yeah. you know, is all part of it. Scout yeah. and 13th century so, and chickens, so, well, which is, you know, is very authentic. I did really enjoy it. What would it you... doesn't sound like I enjoyed no. it, but I did. No. I did, I promise. It sounds like you might have some scouting issues that we should uh, explore <laughs> on further episodes of the Eiffel Tower. Maybe. Uh, you know, on the B-sides, perhaps. Yeah. But, but what would be your message to someone listening in? Let's say Adelaide, Australia. Bring some rough and tough clothes. Yeah, actually, that's my top and advice shoes. too. 
I thought it was really cool. I'm not sure what we mentioned because we're doing this episode on the go, so it's hard to remember what we said and what we said to yeah, each other. Really good point. But it's built. I, I really like that they've built this place and continue to build it very uh, strictly adhering to the style of the 12, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Mm, I think that's really cool. Like, there's a whole brochure that they give you when you walk in that says, uh, we're going to assume that building began in 1229, at which point uh, Philip Auguste, who uh, you guys playing at home, was uh, King Philip II, my favorite of the French kings. Mm -hmm. Mine too, mine too. Yeah, yours too? How many do you know? (laughs) <laughs> me neither which would be fair but he's the one that did the Philip Auguste walls that go around Paris that I'm, I'm quite obsessed with mm-hmm. uh, so it's the same sort of style of walls and it was really cool to get amongst it one thing it that was really interesting is that you said at some point you were like oh look it looks like it was built in the 12th century like literally old yeah that's and weird and yeah. walking around Paris for example and you see pieces of this, like old buildings or this old wall it's like oh I wonder what it looked like when it was new but the same it probably they look the same it's weird like so I specifically was looking at one of the towers and by the way all if you guys need a visual on this I'm going to put a video on YouTube I'm going to put Instagram stories go and check social media while you're listening perhaps but uh, you, you, if you were to go up and just put your hand on the wall it doesn't look any different to a really really old medieval building yeah it looks like a I mean a ruin yeah on the outside but only partly because it's yeah, not finished weird isn't it yeah it's it's like the opposite of a ruin do you hear that? That's Ooh, thunder. Very authentic. That's the thunder of the French countryside. We're going to drive into it. We're on the way now to another chateau where we'll be staying, the Chateau de Misery. Slightly different chateau. Two S's. Yeah. Not Misery. Oh, no. Have you seen the, Have you read the book? Watched the movie? No. My mom said, uh, don't watch it before we go. What's it called? Misery. Is this called Misery? It's, I think it's Stephen King. It's about a oh. woman who kills a guest at her house, I think. We shouldn't oh kill him. Oh, my but... God. Maybe we should watch it tonight. <laughs> Uh, but that's what we're <laughs> off to. Uh, there'll be loads of pictures, Patreon member scrolls, all this that you can check out. Uh, but as for Lena and I, we're going to continue driving. Vroom, vroom. Yeah, continue <laughs> driving. So so get along. What do you give it out of 10? 10. Really? Super authentic. And, you know, I can't just take my past scouting issues mm-hmm. into the account of this scoring. So, 10. I will give it a, a strong 8.8. Oh, stingy. I, well, I don't think anything's a 10, really. What's a 10? A t- nothing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm always waiting for the tent to come along. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, onwards. Onwards. What's the number one rule of traveling? Always stop when you see something of interest. Exactly. And that's exactly what we've done right now. We're sitting in the Musée de Colette, which uh, is. In uh, Saint Sauveur. Saint Sauveur, where she used to live. Her old house is next door. Colette, of course, yep. the, the famed writer mm-hmm. who uh, turned uh, topsy turvied everything in Paris for a while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she lived around the corner. We were in her museum. Yeah, we just stumbled upon it. And we're having in a, a car. Here's a tip when you're in France. I just learned this French word if you because it's raining. And I said, "Can I have a really warm hot chocolate?" And she said, "Un chocolat bien chaud." I said, "Yes, please, madame." And that's what we're. We're doing a very French thing right now. I know. I'm dunking my Madeleine <laughs> in my chocolat très chaud. Oh my gosh, that's a very chocolat bien chaud. Bien chaud. That's a very French sentence. She's got her <laughs> Madeleine. She's dunked it in. Yeah. And then we're going to go upstairs where they've got they've taken all the furniture from her old place, Colette's old place in uh, Palais Royal in Paris. Chucked it upstairs. Mm-hmm. Remade her room. So uh, number one tip of traveling in France: stay off the order routes, the big roads, and stay curious. Always stay curious. <laughs> so we're upstairs, top floor of the Colette Museum, Saint Sauveur. It's We've more just... of a castle. Exactly. It is incredible. Chateau. And from this top floor, you can see out, out of every window in every direction over this beautiful region. I, I'm not even a huge Colette fan. I love it. It's beautiful. And I'll say this. If you like Colette, and th- we're not sponsored by uh, anyone. <laughs> if you like Colette, you should come here and check it out. Much better than the Edith Piaf Museum we went to in Paris. Well, much bigger, yeah. that's for sure. Don't you think it's better too? Yeah. That was a bit is. odd. We didn't. We hadn't been there when <laughs> I did the podcast about it. But we... I mean, the cool thing about the, that tiny museum, like tiny, it was two teeny tiny rooms, and they had like her uh, famous black dress. That's right, yeah. But for some reason, he had like a unsee through plastic thing over That's it that right. he refused to take off so it's like hmm, okay. weirdly about that museum 
because I didn't talk about it at all in the podcast. There's a lot of odd things about it. Mm. Like you have to call ahead to get it. The guy told me he didn't want me to take pictures. You can't share the address of it. Mm. Everything's odd. But this one, beautiful, open, lovely. And uh, just even just the view. Come here. But I wanted to say something else. I was doing a bit of research on the uh, the guy there. Oh, yeah? His name was Willie. So Colette's husband. Mm-hmm. Willie. Willie. Former journalist turned author. Willie. It sounds a bit like Ollie. Yeah. He worked with his wife. Uh-huh. Uh, a great team making books. So I thought a little bit of me and you there. And uh, I've heard also that he used to lock her in the room. So, it's... And that's a bad thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, okay, that was a bit weird. But a uh, little reminder, fair that we say this, I think. We've just done a children's book. We have. So anyone out there who likes books about Paris by an Australian and a Swede, Kylie, the crocodile. <laughs> So specific. <laughs> it's a taste. It's a genre. <laughs> Paris by Australian and feels, sweet. It feels weird to promote our own book in Colette's house. I know. So buy her book first. But if you want to check it out, the Kickstarter is flying. TheEarfulTower.com slash Kylie. Lena did the illustrations. I did the text. It's no Colette, but it's worth a look. So we just stopped off briefly in the Soulieu markets and I thought it would be quite nice to give you guys just a minute of escape in a French village market. This is what it sounds like. Wow. Fairy tale. Okay, this is amazing. We're standing out the front of the chateau. We've just driven down very slowly through a line of, uh, I believe they're linden trees. An alley. An alley of linden trees, autumnal. And uh, the further you get down the driveway, the more the chateau just opens up. And here it is in front of us. Yeah. First thoughts? It's, I'm, I'm speechless. We, we just, for me, I love a moat. <laughs> We've just love a good moat. Medieval looking towers on the side, but I do know that the building is from 1762. Mm-hmm. So 18th century. And one, two, three, four. Are you counting the windows? <laughs> I think it's 17. Okay, so 17 by that times two. I think it's plus 17 some windows in a row. Okay. So inside is presumably Lucy, who uh, is my point of contact. Mm-hmm. And she's the daughter of Philip and Patricia. Who are the Chatelain and the Chatelaine, mm. the Chateau owners? Ah, I see. What, what would that make Lucy then? Lucy would be the, the Chateau child. Chateau baby. <laughs> Chateau baby. So, her, <laughs> so hopefully we'll meet her behind this very door, but there's a 20 foot chain attached to a big bell, and I assume that is how one enters the Chateau. I think I'll give it a ring. Go for it. <laughs> Welcome to the Chateau de Misery. I love your bell. Oh, thank you. But also, what it's a fun, isn't it? What a beautiful place. Aww, what a moat. I know. <laughs> and I saw there was a boat in the moat as well. There's a boat in the moat. Can mate. we take that for a ride? Sure, absolutely. Let's do it. Isn't this lovely? It is very lovely. Isn't she lovely, as Stevie Wonder said? <laughs> <laughs> we have been, uh, out of respect for the chateau owner's privacy, we've been asked not to take pictures or videos inside, mm-hmm. which means, dear listeners, you are going to have to listen to our descriptions. <laughs> but uh, I thought we just, like, we're here now, we've had a, a good look around, it's incredible. Mm. The room that we're in, the bedroom we're in, is bigger than our Paris apartment. I feel like a princess. You feel like a princess? You I look do. like a princess as oh, well. Oh, so charming. <laughs> Where we're sitting now in our bedroom, on uh, so one floor up from the ground, sp- not spiraling staircase, but square staircase. It's just massive. Right? And the room we're in, the bedroom we're in, is, uh, I think, about uh, four to five meter ceilings, large windows overlooking uh, the moat with the fish in it. Yeah, and the field with white cows yeah, behind it. It's lovely. just so picturesque. And it's incredible. It's and, just incredible. And the whole house is uh, exactly the same. I'm hoping to chat with Lucy a little bit about uh, what it's like to live in a chateau. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I, it kind of leaves me thinking that if 
if uh, people at home ever have the opportunity and you can find places you can rent this place but you can rent chateaus all over the country even via Airbnb mm. either the whole place or just a room uh, you should do it it's an experience right it's just such a and we talked about I wrote a little bit in uh, in my book about uh, that my 30th in a chateau mm. super different this one mm. like really different well this is obviously a home Yeah. More than the other one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one wasn't a home right. at all. It's just kind of been left and used. And we were talking to the Châtelaine and the Châtelain, the mm -hmm. owners of this place, uh, and they were saying, uh, a chateau isn't like the Ritz. Do you understand? And we're like, yeah, yeah, why, we, we get it. Like the Ritz <laughs> is like this opulent, um, you know, where you're waited on and everything. This is a home. Uh, and it's just, uh, wow. It's just you walk around just feeling... Uh, surrounded by history yeah portraits on the wall anyway mm. uh we're obviously quite mesmerized i think we're going to hit the <laughs> hit the haystack for the evening but mm. uh, just wanted to chime well, in well i mean it's not <laughs> technically a haystack it's a beautiful massive bed look at the bottom of what the bed what do you bed. call this thing that hangs over the bed i think you call them curtains <laughs> it's like a fancy mosquito net isn't it <laughs> No, I don't know, but the, the, even just the bed, I'm looking at the bottom of the bed now, uh, the wood, with the, it's carved wood mm. with, uh, like, legs. With legs. Like, but uh, I say legs, <laughs> like, uh, intrigue. It's more like lion paws. Yeah, we're not going to get a job as uh, chateau describers, are we? No, But we are tired, not. so we'll leave you guys uh, for the end of this day and be back again tomorrow. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit. Lucy. Yes. How you doing? Great. How uh, are you doing? I'm really good. I'm great. Good. And, and uh, so we spent the night here now, and uh, this place is magnificent. It's not bad. It's We're incredible. Very lovely. I think the first thing I need to do is uh, get the pronunciation correct. Yes. Chateau de... Misery. 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 Yeah. So and for people at home, it's spelt like misery with an extra S. That's right. Misery. Yeah. And we call it misery in... In English, but obviously it means the opposite of misery. It is the opposite. It, it means heaven on earth. And it is the, what was it, the valley of the Serene Valley? Yes, in the Serene Valley, le, la Vallée du Serein. Ah, and you, and uh, the reason that you, your French pronunciation is uh, so perfect is because you are in fact bilingual, right? Yes. So a little bit about you. You're, you, you grew up in this chateau. I did. Okay, now we need to, we need to step back <laughs> a little Paris. bit. And Paris. And Paris as yeah, well, as yeah. an English woman. Yeah, well, okay. I was a child, but yes. Right, okay. So a, a Brit who uh, grew up in a chateau. The thing that strikes me is really un unusual. Like, uh, a lot of people, especially people listening to this show, have probably been to chateau, chateaus around yeah. France. Yeah. And you see them, and they're beautiful. But this is lived in. This is your family house. It's, it's a home, yeah. Yeah. Definitely a home. So yeah. how, like, do you notice how that separates it from other chateaus? Like, like for me, when I saw that, that soft toy, that, that stuffed toy over there, <laughs> it made me think, someone lives here. Or the photo, like modern photos yeah. on the uh, yeah. period, uh, what do you call this thing here? Oh, it's a commode. A commode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you notice that still, or is this just a home for you, or...? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit particular in that I have visited a lot of chateaus because right. my parents sell chateaus, they're right. estate agents. So I've seen all sorts. But also, um, you know, I've been to stay in chateaus which are run at, at, which are family homes, French family homes. And so there's quite a lot of that stuff lying around as well. Right. But I think it's different to the chateaus like the Chateau Hotel or maybe chateaus that are bought by... Um, people who come from abroad and who turn them into guest houses or yeah. hotels. And I think that those ones tend to be a bit more hotel-like hotel as well. Mm. So you might have less of those family touches, right. less of those homely touches. So you must have been to so many of the chateaus. Do you know how many there are, chateaus, in, in well, France? Well, they say there are 40,000. Wow. Um, my parents have definitely been to probably 5,000. Wow, I mean, that's crazy. And you? Up, uh, uh, hundreds for yeah. sure. So here's the question: What what separates an average chateau from a good one or a great one? Well, I mean, I'm not fussed about other chateaus. Right. I've got to say, yeah. I love this one, yeah. and I'm not too fussed about others. Yeah. So that's my. But surely, answer. like, for, so like, I mean, for example, I love doors in Paris, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. And there are there are certain criteria I have that if I see a door with, for example, chasseur. Uh, wheel protectors I'll yeah. go that door is just even better for me yes. right? 
<laughs> so do you have things really that, dangerous to drive into yeah, as well <laughs> sure, I can imagine especially uh, with modern cars <laughs> um, it's alright with scooters though yeah, it's not quite a problem scooters. but with, uh, with the Chateau it, like you know them really well so when you go into one do you go well no moat here or, well if I just hear my father he would say if it's not an 18th century Chateau there's no interest really basically is what he would say as in 18th century about, or earlier or just no, 18th century 18th century is the best, I think, because of the classical proportions and kind of Palladian influence and stuff like that. But he's mad about symmetry. You know, there are plenty of other interesting chateaus before, um, and he might say less so afterwards. But that's a whole other conversation we should have with him. Right, right. Um, But I think... I do like the big entrance, I have to say. You've got a huge entrance here, and you come in, and it's just so open and... And that's something I I like in in chassis, and you don't see so much. Like the staircases are often a lot smaller and a lot more closed in. Um, and then I think the orientation is really in- important, and mm. and the location of the different rooms, and maybe the sizes of the rooms. Mm. So this is, I guess. A fairly well, it's a kind of a medium-sized chateau, yep. but it actually doesn't have that many rooms in it mm. because they're very spacious and they're very, they're very agreeable yeah. size, I think, to be in. Oh my goodness, the room that we're staying in is bigger than my my whole flat <laughs> in Paris, easily. And and mine, <laughs> yeah, probably put together. But the ceiling, yeah. the, even the so we're sitting, folks, at home. We're sitting in a the salon, mm-hmm. yeah. which is. Uh, uh, the, the the ceiling has, has got to be five meters high, or Probably. I don't know what that is, yeah. fifteen feet. Yeah. And all the uh, furniture is like period furniture, yeah. isn't there yeah, a way that they say that in French? Ah, dans son jus. Yeah. Oh yeah, the chasse is dans son jus. That's right. Yeah. Well, so what, can we <laughs> like a like a good coq au vin or something like that? Right. So the French people like to tell you guys that this yeah, one they, they like that it's in its juice. Absolutely. Is that yeah. just a thing for chateaus and food, or can you say it about anything? <laughs> I think you can say it about anything. Yeah. Dans anything that's jus. just really real. Can you say you it know? one more time? Dans son jus. Dans son jus. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, and this place absolutely is. It's lived in. You've grown up here. Sort of my last question for now, really, is: uh, Did that change you as a child? Like when you? It must have been weird to go to a friend's house who lived in a normal house, and be like, "Where's where's your towers and turrets?" <laughs> no, not at all. Or, I mean, I, I think actually a few of my school friends have family chateaus. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I've stayed in a few of those. But you know, we, as, like you, we. I grew up in a tiny flat in Paris, mm. and I, I'm just as happy going on holiday in a little farmhouse mm. in the mountains. I love the mountains, for example, mm. as I am, um, you know, going on a city break or being here. Or no, so no, I don't think that that but, shocked me. But, no. but at the end of the day, you like coming back to a chateau. Well, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> it's does, amazing. <laughs> who doesn't? Uh, but cool. All right. Well, thanks for your time. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go have a cup of chateau tea. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and guys, on Lucy's recommendation, I've snagged Philippe. Philip, I should say, he's English. Uh, for a quick chat, he's the Chatelain, the owner of this place. Let's do that. Here he is. Uh, Philip, I've, me. I've never interviewed someone who's holding a knife before. I'll put it on one side. <laughs> but but I, it is because you were laying the table in, uh, would we call this the... Dining room. The dining room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had just a few little questions uh, for you at the Chatelain, as I suppose we would use... That's the yeah. word, right? Yes? Mm, Chatelain, somebody who owns the Chateau. Right. right. Or uh, failing actually runs it for somebody who... Else. Right, and uh, your daughter Lucy suggested, uh, and I, I'm not sure that you actually agree with this, but an 18th century chateau is the best kind of chateau in France. She kind of hinted that. <laughs> I think it's a period when they very rarely put, put a foot wrong, the architecture of the 18th century, which is varied from one end to the other. It's very successful. But very often when you have a mixture of, of periods in one house, it also makes a chateau very attractive which may start out as a medieval chateau um, and then gradually become 17th or 18th century. I see. Like this house, which has medieval towers, but the house itself was built in one go in 1760. Okay. Or bussy Rabutin, the famous chateau that belongs to the Monument Historique, where um, Madame de Sévigny went to stay with her cousin, bussy Rabutin, and that has three Renaissance wings 
this linking four towers, then, like us, with moats around. And there are similar examples all over the place. And can you say the name of that particular chateau one more time for the people who Bussy are... Bussy Rabutin. There you go. Uh, and uh, I want to know, I, I'm certain that there are listeners right now who can't quite picture what makes an 18th century chateau, what they typically look like. Uh, could you describe it in sort of layman's terms for us? Uh, usually they have tall windows. Uh, originally they had small panes in most cases. Um, symmetrical as a rule, very often with um, uh, architectural features um, concentrating on the, on the central part with maybe a pediment with a coat of arms in it or or with urns on the, on the corners of the um, uh, pediment or um, central front door or maybe, um, as in our case, um, sort of French window doors right the way along the middle. Right. I don't know. But you could have to look at it. Um, if you've been anywhere in a, in a French city, you'll have seen lots of 18th century houses. Sure, but there are many people who've maybe uh, not yet been to France at all and they're just daydreaming right now. Mm, well, but then where they live, they might be in Bath and have seen the Royal Crescent or they might have been um, uh, in Regent's Park. Who knows where they might have been? In sure, in, in classical in, architecture. Well, what about in countries like Australia and uh, America? There's not much to go by. Um, America has a, uh, there's a book I have here somewhere, which is the Palladian style in Britain, Ireland, and America. And there are plenty of Palladian buildings dating from the 18th century and possibly earlier. Interesting. In, in, uh, at least on the eastern seaboard, perhaps not. Um, um, in Texas. Further in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The final question I have is, uh, Lucy mentioned that you have maybe been inside thousands of chateaus in France. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, so can you tell me one that was particularly memorable for you? Well, the one I find particularly memorable, but not outside, inside, is a house called Villette, which is near to, not far from Paris, on the way to the Vexin, um, which is actually designed by um, François Monsard, who was a successful architect at the end of the 17th century. And... Uh, it's a great scale because just as our ceilings are maybe four and a half meters high, in that house they're six meters high and the rooms are proportionate. So they're longer and wider, proportionate to the extra height. And it's a very interesting piece of architecture built on vaulted cellars with a 30 hectare park, rather like a private Versailles with um, sheets of water and cascades and, and so on, and the house itself inside was largely redecorated in the 18th century. It was a dining room with Louis XV's um, Rococo panelling with um, overdoors by, um, I forget his name, but <laughs> Boucher, Boucher. Right, fantastic. And is that one that we can, that anyone can go and visit, or is it a... If you want to buy it, it's yours for 68 million. 68 million euros? Or 86 million. Oh, goodness, let's hope it's 68 million. <laughs> No, it's well, out of my furnished. It's been furnished by Jack Garcia, the famous um, decorator who has a, un, has, expects to have clients with unlimited budgets. Okay, well, he can count me out just for now, uh, okay. but maybe one day. But uh, I, I want to finish on this, which is something that maybe more people can relate to than buying an 86 million euro chateau, is if... Uh, people are coming to visit a chateau, maybe a home. As a tourist. Yeah, yeah. as a tourist or to stay for the, to stay for the weekend. Um, do you recommend, for example, that they bring, you know, dress with a jacket and, you know, these kind of clothes? <laughs> because I see, I see you look me up and down when I said it, but there's a distinct difference in the way you and I dress today, and I'm feeling a little guilty about it. Well, actually, I'm just a bit old-fashioned. I remember reading some book about uh, a novel, and it was describing somebody who was dressed in the fashion of 50 years ago. So am I. Oh, okay. I think... So you can't really go wrong if you if you dress up for a chateau, in other words. Dress, I, I think, yes, it's true. You should, we as a habit, as a general rule of dressing for dinner, that's dinner jackets and, and nice dresses for the girls and so on, yes. which is, I think, relatively unusual nowadays. But Well, I live and I learn, and the next time I'm here... <laughs> no, well, Lucy said she was being having an informal weekend for her yeah, friends. Okay. Okay, well, thank you for your time, Philip. No problem, no problem. And come again, it's been, um, been great having you.
What a weekend. What a weekend. It's come to an end. I don't know if the people at home can hear the running of the water into the moat. We're mm -hmm. back out the front, standing on the moat, looking at the chateau once Bags more. Bags packed. About to Ready leave to back go. to Paris. Uh, but what a weekend. Mm. Uh, some highlights that I want to point out for you guys. If you are a member, you will already know this. But uh, I did a live Patreon-only walk with Patricia, the Chatelaine. And she showed us through her gardens. And it was really fun. Mm. It was really cool. So if you want to see, uh, you know, if you want to hang out with a Chatelaine for half an hour and see what a chateau garden, become a member and watch the replay. Uh, patreon.com slash the Eiffel Tower. But uh, really, what a weekend in Burgundy. As we've said before, uh, a chateau, if you can get into one in the countryside <laughs> of France, is absolutely worth it. Always a good idea. Do you think one day, <laughs> Lena, we could be a Chatelain and a Chatelaine? I don't know. <laughs> it's a lofty aspiration. It is. But uh, I'll tell you one thing that I noticed. It looks like a lot of work and a lot of projects involved mm. in a place like this. Mm. For now... We couldn't even count the rooms. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Patricia said once 81 people stayed here. Yeah. 81 people slept here. I mean, here. Just, just that. Once we had four people, including us, staying at our house. Yeah, it was cramped. Yeah, it was cramped. <laughs> but anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed this uh, little weekend away to Burgundy, a lovely region. Uh, make sure you come here. Try the wine. If you're not a vegetarian, try the frog's legs. I did. Bit weird. <laughs> That's what I had for lunch the other day. Like uh, tiny chicken. Yeah, it tastes weird. It tastes mm. weird. I'd say you don't need to do that every day. <laughs> Worth <laughs> checking out. But look, a really nice weekend and uh, good to get out of Paris, especially in these unusual times. And, uh, well, looking forward to a car trip back to Paris with you. Yeah. Sh shall we go for a ride, ride, ride? <laughs> Let's do it. I don't know.